excellent example of a tool in Revit that allows you to generate some complex and compelling graphics with relatively little effort is the Displace Elements tool, or the Displacement tool as it's sometimes known. And uh, in this video, I want to show you how you can get from something that looks like this to something that looks like this in really not that many steps. Uh, it'll be a relatively short video because there's really just two main things that we want to do. We want to move objects away from their original point, and then we want to assign these red dotted path lines, as you can see there, to complete the look. Uh, now, I'm going to be using some fairly complex geometry for this. If you want to retrace the steps that I used to get to this point, um, I've got a video that I'll post here about 3D detailing. But it's not necessary. Uh, you'll be able to get the same sort of effect with some simple geometry like this. In fact, as you can see here, it works really well with massing. Um, but again, just really simple geometry will create the same sort of compelling look. So don't feel like you have to have this level of detail here. As I mentioned, uh, there's two basic steps involved in the process. The first is to identify which objects you want to move away from their original point. And we can do that by just making the initial selection. So I'm going to just grab all the elements associated with this mullion here. And I'll hold down my control key, of course, to do that. And uh, I'm going to deliberately forget to include these gaskets here, just to kind of make the point about how you can edit the set uh, if you make mistakes in the uh, original selection. So once I've made that selection, you'll see with those objects selected, I now have access to objects on the Modify tab, and I can see the Displace Elements tool up above. So when I click on that, you'll see that this gizmo appears, consistent with a lot of other Autodesk programs here. And uh, as you may be aware, it just allows me to hover over any of these three axis lines and then just click and drag. And when I do that, you'll see that it tracks the numbers here. So if I want to be a little bit more specific and uh, accurate, I can just enter whatever number I like and you'll see it adjust. Now, as I said, uh, in that initial selection set, I deliberately left out these gaskets. And if I want to add them after the fact, all I have to do is just click up here on the edit button and it will allow me to either add or remove elements from that original selection set. So the default is add and I'll just hover over these gaskets and click and you can see that they automatically join the other objects in the set and they get aligned with them and it's just that easy i just click on the finish when that's done and uh, you can see that they've been moved away from their base point now that might look a little alarming and you might wonder what sort of damage you may have done to your model but that's one of the really um, interesting things about this tool is it allows you to make these moves and it's only going to occur in this view so if i was to go to a default 3d view let's say and look at the original model you can see that no damage has been done everything's still in its original spot so the nice thing about this is that you're only making these moves and setting up this graphic and it'll only show in this specific view. You're not tampering with uh, any of the other placement of geometry anywhere else in your project file. So once you've made the move, uh, all you have to do now, as I showed in that initial demo, uh, was just is just to place some displacement path lines to help people kind of understand where this object may have came, come from. And to do that, you just click on that selection set and then you'll see over here on the displacement set panel over on the right that you can just click path and then you want to just zoom in and notice that it wants to place these paths on any of the edge points of the objects within the set. So I'll just be really particular about exactly what point of the object I want to uh, radiate these displacement path lines from and I'll click and now you can see that they're displayed. Now, um, when you do that on your screen, you might notice that you don't have little tiny red dots. Uh, I've customized that, and that's the next step I'm going to show you. Um, these can get fairly complex, and you can have a lot of objects. And, of course, the edges uh, with this graphic style that I've selected are black anyway. So the default black lines might start to look a little confusing. So what I've done is I've just gone to the Manage tab, and I've clicked on Object Styles. And then if, the, if here in the object styles window, if I just select the annotation objects tab, uh, you'll see that down here, there's a section for displacement path settings. And I have assigned a slightly heavier line weight and changed the color. And then I've selected one of the line patterns. Um, you have to kind of experiment here to get exactly the look that you want. Remember, this is also going to be controlled by the scale. So if I'm using a scale like one to 25, those lines are going to get a little bit thicker. Uh, if I drop down something like one to five, that's a little bit more manageable. So it takes a bit of experimenting to figure out exactly what line type and line weight and color uh, work the best. Uh, if the line types don't quite look right, remember you can always go to the additional settings tab and click on line patterns. 
and then you can either make a custom or edit one of the available line pattern styles. So that takes a bit of trial and error. And then, of course, as you can imagine, uh, I guess the more laborious part of this would be selecting exactly what objects are involved in the set and how far away from their base points you move them. So um, to get something like this, I experimented with a few other options, you know, played around with this one and then a few others and arrived at uh, what I felt was probably the clearest, most sort of organized look for this. That's going to be the most complex part. Managing the settings and everything else is relatively easy, as I showed. Now, something else that I'll show you here before we uh, wrap this up is that this is also something that uh, you can move around to get whatever type of orientation of the view you like. Uh, when I was doing the initial uh, placement here of these objects, I was relying on my view cube, and I think this is a good idea. Uh, you know that on your view cube, you've got these kind of preset spots that you can click on so that you can always kind of come back to the same consistent place, consistent view. So it's a good idea, I find, to rely on those. But as I showed, um, you can orbit around and you can see that all those displaced paths track the object and uh, you can set this up to be oriented however you like. So really quite a compelling tool. You can do some fascinating things with this. And then as I showed, uh, it's not tampering with any of the rest of the model. So uh, you're always able to go back to your original and uh, try again with other versions. So hope that helped. Um, if you enjoyed using the displacement tool, in that demo and look forward to some uh, good opportunities to generate some really compelling looking graphics. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe and we'll see you in later videos.